do one. This is a podcast that brings stories. It's a podcast that shares information, and this podcast is back for you from IPSF Pro. What's up, everyone? My name is Moises Carta, and I am the team leader of the Science of Community of the RMPO, and I will be your host for this episode. With me here to co-host this episode, you know her. She's our RMPO. We have here. Hello everyone, I'm Jutsna Pukril, your Regional Media and Publication Officer of IPSF April for the mandate of 2020 to 2021. So, this is the third episode of IPSF April podcast series. For this episode of April podcast, we will be sharing a story from one of our guests who was diagnosed with scoliosis, a sideways curvature of the spine. Without further ado, let us welcome our guest for this episode, Miss Ikta. Thank you very much, Miss. Thank you very much. So, hello everyone. My name is Ikta Achare and I'm a pharmacy student currently pursuing pharmacy in Kathmandu University, Nepal. And uh, my hobby is to just photograph me and uh, reading books. I love to read books and I'm also the topper of my class. And um, and uh, uh, further that, my aim is to be a uh, research scientist, but I'm not sure. So this is a little background regarding me. So, Ekta, can you tell us about your journey of scoliosis? Like, how were you diagnosed? Can you share us, like, your journey and how did you find more information about the condition, given that not many people know about it? Yes, uh, so I was born in a small town of Nepal called Hetaura. And one day I was just walking with my mother and some stranger noticed my unusual rim hump in my back. And then we rushed to a nearby hospital. And uh, since there were not uh, very um, high level doctors, so we were referred to the capital of uh, Nepal, that is Kathmandu. Then I went to Kathmandu and uh, we were given a brace, you know, some kind of brace we wear around our back. And then I wore that brace for around three years and it was quite difficult for me. And after a few years, the, after three years, uh, we came to know that brace will not be helpful for me. Then we went to another doctor that is a neurosurgeon and uh, I was uh, referred to the surgery by that neurosurgeon and uh, which wa- that uh, surgery was quite not uh, useful for me or because the doctor was uh, diagnosed it in a wrong way that it was not actually a nerve problem, it was a spine problem for me. So again I had to go for another surgery and it was quite painful and in this way all this diagnosis process was done. Oh. Um, after hearing your story, um, knowing that you were with your mom when you experienced that, I just want to know, um, you were so young, how did you feel? Did you blame anyone or did you get angry with anyone? Yeah, I was so young and uh, as uh, you know, when you have to wear that brace, the school uniform, I was not in my school uniform. I was in some kind of other dress. So I was the center of attraction among all the students. All the students used to stay at me and uh, it is also obvious that they used to bully me and um, uh, and uh, uh, I don't I don't I have a problem in bending and twisting my back so I always have to ha- ask for help with other people and I, I as a, I was so young that I was not in the condition to understand the problem by myself so it was also difficult for me to understand make other understand my problem so they used to just um, uh, ignore me and uh, I have so many limitations. I could not join with the other children to travel because I have a problem in traveling also. And uh, I have always had to ask for help. So uh, a kind of ignorance, a kind of being alone was always there with me. Yeah, that's that's quite sad. Uh, you mentioned that uh, you had like wrong diagnosis. Like you know, the the yeah. physician that uh, you were visiting uh, did like wrong diagnosis, and then how did you uh, knew that uh, it was wrong diagnosis? And I mean, like any uh, long term impact that the wrong diagnosis brought upon your health or like in your day to day life, any uneasiness, yeah, and so on. Okay, uh, it was like uh, uh, as it was a wrong diagnosis. When we, uh, my my condition was not cured by that uh, surgery. 
previous surgery was not needed it was just done for you know for money or for some other cause i don't know but uh, the when we moved to another uh, physician uh, the spine physician uh, he said that uh, there was not any nerve problem the problem was in the spine so again i had to go for the surgery for the spine uh, so in this way uh, the my problem was wrongly diagnosed and i was able to know how it was wrongly diagnosed yeah that's that's quite sad so like what did they diagnose you with oh the nerve problem right yeah at first uh, they say that i have some nerve problems after doing the mri and they also didn't mention that i have some spine problem if they had mentioned uh, the spine problem i may had uh, undergoes the surgery in a very early stage but they only mentioned that i have some spine problem after few a month uh, after the uh, previous surgery so when i went to the uh, spine physician they mentioned that the pro real problem was in the spine it was not in the nerve the real problem was in the spine uh, okay hearing your story it's like Um, the wrong diagnosis really brought the anxiety and fear. Here in the Philippines, we have here what we call second opinion or third opinion, wherein if you were diagnosed, you are not. You feel like there's something wrong with the diagnosis. You could go to second or third opinion. Well, in your case, it's really good that you um, you have gone to another doctor and then you found out that it's not a nerve problem, but it's that a scoliosis. So after hearing those stories, after hearing the misdiagnosis and your experiences, um, my next question is: Do you feel like it has been shaping you, or did it make you feel weaker or stronger knowing that you have scoliosis? At the very early stage, I already I used to feel weak because I used to miss a uh, plenty of my classes. But now, after going all those problems, it has made me more stronger. I have a uh, experience uh, near to I have a near to death experience, which make me even feel stronger. And uh, it also it also have given me a new perspective to live the life that you have this life for only once. Because I have already been to the surgery for the two times, so I have I know the importance of my life, and it has made me stronger and have to uh, and have to live my life in a very healthy way. That's so good of you to say. Like I can still feel the energy, right? Like from you, emerging from you. Uh, so, like, uh, can you explain a bit about your challenges, like in day to day life, like when you were uh, younger, and like when you are like as now, or you yeah, you are now. So, like, uh, did you do you like feel uh, there is any change? and the the difference in the challenges okay when i was younger it was difficult for me to ask for help and uh, because we were all a very, at a very small age uh, it was very difficult for other to make um, understand about my problem but now um, everyone is uh, so much helpful that ever ready to help me uh, because i i have a problem in bending and twisting and traveling so that now everyone understand my problem oh she has this kind of condition we have to treat her like this uh, now people understand my emotions my feelings and uh, respect me as a human being but as when we were children then nobody used to care me nobody uh, was in the condition to uh, make me uh, to understand me because we were all a very at a very young age but now the condition uh, now the um, situation has changed everyone is ready to help me that um knowing uh, after knowing that you are diagnosed with scoliosis um how was it was it easier than before before knowing that you have scoliosis or before having surgery okay uh, so before uh, and the scoliosis is actually a sideways curvature uh, it is painless for me it is painless i uh, there are all other form of scoliosis as well like i have congenital scoliosis the scoliosis by birth and it is a genetic uh, and uh, there are some other scoliosis like neuromuscular scoliosis which is quite painful and there are also some other kind of scoliosis like idiopathic scoliosis which is especially seen before the Uh, time of puberty and it mainly basically occurs in case of girls rather than in boys uh, so uh, before uh, the the condition of scoliosis in my case is it is not pain, painful for me so, but if i had not been to uh, surgery then the condition is going to be worse in the future and uh, it is going to impact our lungs and heart 
so because uh, to prevent that I had my uh, surgery at uh, that stage. So um, before having surgery, it, uh, it was painless. But uh, it, it, the surgery was needed because if I had not been to the surgery, then uh, it, it, is, it was going to affect my heart and lungs. Uh, you, you got quite lucky like with the later yeah. diagnosis that you got to uh, have the, um, you know, like you got to undergo the surgery. So like uh, I want to ask, like since you told that it uh, is congenital, like did you have any uh, family history of scoliosis? And like, can you also explain about the degree of your scoliosis? Yeah. Uh, so it is basically the genetic that means maybe there was some problem when I'm inside mother wombs because uh, nobody in my family have uh, this problem uh, but uh, uh, mentioning that we don't need any family members to have this condition it is quite unique in nature that uh, if there may be some kind of uh, disbalance in mother's food or during her pregnancy that may also result in uh, this problem and uh, my degree of scoliosis is around 104 degree which is quite a lot because the normal degree of scoliosis is just 10 degree now we can imagine how bad my sideways curvature was yeah that's that's quite huge 104 like uh, after the surgery how is like it now uh, after the surgery the curvature has been decreased and it is just um, 84 degree but it is still um, huge but uh, it will not be gonna worse in the future because I have some implantation at my back so like after the implantation will be removed uh, it will be uh, uh, how do I say it <laughs> Okay, uh, the implantation uh, is uh, the door and screws uh, are fitted at my back and uh, if it will break at some point of my life, hopefully I, 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 hopefully it will not break but if it will break then I again have to go for another surgery but uh, once it is implanted, um, it will just uh, attach with muscles in the spine and it will be fixed over there. Mm. Titanium doors and all the screws are fitted at my back. Oh. Um, I, I'm curious about how did your family support you after the surgery and before the surgery? My family is very much supportive and my my sister is also a pharmacy student. She's doing PhD and my brother-in-law is also a pharmacy student. He's doing postdoc research and my father is a government officer and my mother is a housewife. So as I'm, I'm from educated family, I don't have any problem. Uh, regarding the family support, my family is fully support and I have seen some other uh, person who are suffering from my problem and they are not getting the my family, they are not getting the family support and they are sometimes locked even inside the room because of the social stigma. Really? Uh, knowing your story, mm -hmm. I, I couldn't help but say that, that you are really strong. Yeah, you are You're so really strong, strong knowing and what you have got okay. into you're yeah, very like, strong yeah and like you are so lucky with the support as well so uh, you just mentioned about the stigma so uh, yeah it is really common that like we can see as an outsider uh, in the you know society of uh, developing country like Nepal where like you are living right now so like can you uh, have you experienced such uh, public stigma, social stigma directly? Uh, yes, so it's obvious because being a girl, some people believe that I'm not going, I, I will not be able to marry because of my condition. And secondly, I will not be able to do some physical work because of my condition. And um, even now, people bully for my height because I'm short in stature. And um, uh, that is uh, some social stigma that I face. But uh, some people even have a huge back home. And they are, I find, I, I have found one boy who used to have one big back home. He was suffering from congenital scoliosis, the same that I'm suffering from. And he has not been to school for around eight years because of the bully he, he was facing in the school. So that was so bad. And I, I made the boy aware of the treatment. Okay, you can go and you can um, just cure your disease. There is treatment available at different hospitals. So he just went to one of the hospital and then 
uh, he I, I i think he had joined uh, school uh, nearly after 8 years now oh so having known these stigmas and discriminations um what do you want to say to those people who are unaware or don't or those who lack knowledge about scoliosis like what can we do what can an individual do to help you in fighting this stigma yeah so uh, firstly uh, we should respect every human being because everyone has a feelings everyone has emotions and uh, irrespective of what they are facing to because nobody know what they have gone through so we must respect each other and secondly the scoliosis is a physical condition that means we are going to have some physical problems like bending twisting so we must help those people who are in a difficult period of time and second is that uh, there is nothing related with a mental problems we are mentally healthy we are just have a physical problems so we uh, so we can do anything we desire for like i want to set an example i am a pharmacy student i am even a topper of my class i am a hard working student and if i can achieve the thing i desire then everyone can do so it's not like that he cannot do this we can do everything we desire i want to tell everyone that thing Yeah, that's that's quite impressive. Uh, like the 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 views that you have for the life. I mean, the you know ethics and what what like the spark that makes you uh, forward. Yeah, of course, the having a strong willpower is more essential than uh, like doing something by themselves. So yes, Mrs. Yeah, I also agree with what you said. We should be respectful be- always because I mean, we did not ask for this. We didn't ask to have physical problem. You did not ask to have this physical problem. We can do anything about it. We can do anything for it, but to adapt what what comes with it. So I think the least others could do is to be respectful and to be understanding towards your situation. And if others could help in their small ways, I think it would be good. But the best thing would be to be respectful and to be understanding towards your situation yes i totally agree so uh, i also wanted to ask like within your journey how many uh, people with scoliosis did you meet and like how did you offer uh, help being that you were well aware about the condition right so i wanted to ask about this Okay. Uh, since I have also involved in different peer support group, I have been uh, becoming leader from uh, different peer support group. So I has I have found many people uh, throughout my journey, and some of them were from India. They used to call me at phone and how they used to ask me how was my journey, what is the cost of the surgery, uh, is the condition even worse after the surgery because the surgery is a very risky surgery. Even uh, we can go under the paralysis if it is not uh, uh, treated properly, if it is not done properly. So uh, I used to make them aware everything will be gonna fine. You'll be gonna fine after surgery. Uh, don't uh, go in rumors. so i used to make them aware and i am also involved in different whatsapp group and uh, they can also contact me in whatsapp group viber anywhere and i'm always ready to help people like me mm. yeah so um you're also a pharmacy student like us right yeah yeah so i i want to ask how can we as pharmacy students and those recent graduates from apro over I- ipsf help to raise awareness about this condition and to fight against stigma against this scoliosis okay uh, one thing is that the one we are doing right now the one we are interviewing the uh, people like uh, scoliosis secondly is like we can do certain kind of dramas like uh, uh, okay, uh, some uh, some sort of uh, people are misbehaving and then uh, he's doing very nice work at last some kind of dramas we can create and thirdly we can do some kind of videos and um, videos uh, campaign also and uh, fourthly posters also we can make to make the people aware about this scoliosis and we can also invite some uh, physicians uh, regarding this condition you mentioned about promotional materials and um promoting uh, especially in social media since we are in a yeah. pandemic so many people couldn't go outside so a social media is really helpful for promotion or raising awareness towards this public health so 
to all to everyone tuning here, make sure to um, subscribe to all of IPSF April social media because we are really doing our best to raise awareness about different public health issues. We are really doing our best to be informative and to share our knowledge and information about the different diseases like this scoliosis. So I would like to thank you for sharing your story and your journey for our listeners. I do hope that people who tune in with us today had received ample information about scoliosis. Joseph, do you have any concluding words? Yeah, I really thank uh, Ikta and Moises for this episode because like, it was really insightful for me as well. Uh, scoliosis was a new uh, thing for me. Even like as a pharmacy student, I didn't like had uh, in-depth knowledge about it. So I think it was really insightful for me and uh, I really got motivated. Like, of course, you also shared a few ideas Maybe we will steal a little <laughs> in like future days or maybe long after, uh, you know, long after in the future. So, yeah, that's it for me. So, maybe we could ask Ikta for her final words or what yeah, you want to say to April people. Remarks. What do you want to say? Uh, thank you very much uh, that uh, it gave me uh, this platform to share my journey. I'm sure that it will be very impactful because uh, it will touch uh, the youth population. Um, and sharing an individual story can help uh, thousands of lives. And uh, I'm so happy to be here and share my journey. Thank you, both of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ikta. <laughs> thank you, Ikta. So I think that's the end, Josie, right? Yeah, it's already, I don't. I didn't even realize that the end is really near. I felt like we were just going with the flow, but the time, it always, like, it never stops. Yeah. Uh, so, I, yeah, so I think we have to say goodbye to our April people. Until next time, April, this has been Moises Karta and... That's not for Krill. Wishing all to be safe and... See you in APPS 2021. 2021. See Bye. you guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for watching.